Hi guys, um, so I, I did a video not that long ago on um, the talking about, uh, you know, are you in the faith and uh, the interpretation that Lordship Salvation has um, to say it's not about whether you believe the gospel but w whether you're showing fruit. Um, and I guess, uh, uh, so I've already sort of talked about that but... Um, I'm going to talk again about uh, John MacArthur's views on Lordship Salvation. He is a proponent of it and has turned it into an art form. Uh, so here's um, his article on it. Um, and he has these um, nine things that, um, he, that he thinks define Lordship Salvation and, and contrasts it to so-called easy believism. If you put easy in front of it, um, it makes it derogatory. Um, it makes it sound bad even though, well it, well, it should be easy to believe, but apparently it's not because so many people just won't believe. Um, so yeah, first of all, scriptures teach that the gospel calls sinners to faith joined in oneness with repentance repentance is turning from sin that consists not of human work but of divinely bestowed grace it is a change of heart but genuine repentance will affect a change of behavior as well in contrast easy believing believism teaches that repentance is simply a synonym for faith and no turning from sin is required for salvation well if you know anything from watching the Grace Community YouTube videos, you'll know repentance does not mean turning from sin. And you will not find repent of sin in the Bible unless you're using a dodgy translation, such as the NLT. Um, so there is no such thing in the Bible as repent from sin required for salvation. Um, repent is just about changing your mind about the truth that well first of all you think there is no god i don't need a savior then you repent you change your mind you believe the gospel and you believe you need a savior and that jesus did die for your sins so that is um a load of rubbish um second scripture teaches that salvation is all god's work yes of course it does um those who believe are saved utterly from any effort apart from any effort of their own yes um, even faith is a gift of God yes not a work of man um, and here we go real faith therefore cannot be defective or short-lived but endures forever in contrast easy believers believers and teachers that faith might not last and that a true Christian can completely cease believing um, Faith is a gift from God. Um, it's not your faith. He gave it to you. He gave you the ability to have faith in him and therefore it is eternal. He gave it to you. Um, and I can tell you from experience that um, when I was, you know, I was saved from like age 12 at least, if not earlier, I believe the gospel and I um, backslid you know in my early 20s um, until my 30s sometime in there like basically I was uh, sort of really for 30 years I ha had no idea um, what Christianity was except I believed Jesus died for my sins and that, that's all I could tell you I, I had no you know good story to tell people about how I got saved and how it's changed my life because well it it didn't change my life um, so but all through those um, 30 years of not really having a clue the one thing I knew was that I believed um, that 
Jesus died for my sins. So um, that that was that was because the faith came from God and it did not go away. So anyone who has believed the gospel at some point, they're going to have the witness of the Spirit. The, the Spirit uh, knows the truth and it will tell you. And so someone might say, oh, I, I'm, I don't believe anymore. They're probably going through a really bad patch and they, they might say one thing, but deep down they, they still believe it because their spirit has been born of God, reborn, born again. So no, that is not true. Number, number two is not true. Um, scriptures teach that the object of faith is Christ himself, not a creed or a promise. Yes, of course. Faith therefore involves a personal commitment to Christ. Um, no. Faith is believing. Trusting. It's not a personal commitment. I haven't signed a contract committing myself to, to Christ and therefore he goes, oh, all right, since you've, since you've uh, signed this legal document saying that you're going to promise to be a good person and follow him, then, okay, now I'll save you. No, it's all you have to do is believe the gospel. I mean, that's what the gospel is and it is so clear in Paul's teaching, even in, you know, John, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son that whoever, whosoever shall believe on him will not perish but have ever turn, uh, everlasting life. Um, so faith is not a personal commitment. So here he says, in other words, all true believers follow Jesus. Well, I believe Jesus died for my sins and that's what any Christian would believe. Um, yeah, I, I, what's, what's the verse he uses? My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Well, I know my Lord's voice and I know when I'm not hearing it and I know when I am hearing it because it backs up the gospel, it backs up the word of God. Uh, and no one will snatch it out of my hand. So, um, I don't know how you can literally follow Jesus the way they talk about following Jesus because that came out of the four Gospels um, where people literally followed him around. Um, after that, it's, it's a matter of um, believing um, the Gospel and increasing your knowledge of, of God and learning to walk in the Spirit. Um, in contrast, easy believing teaches that saving faith is simply being convinced or giving credence to the truth of the gospel. Um, yes, and does not include a personal commitment to the person of Christ. No, well, it doesn't, because that's not in the Bible. You just made that up. Number four, scripture teaches that real life inevitably produces a changed life. Salvation includes a transformation of the inner person. The nature of the Christian is, a new, is new and different. The unbroken pattern of sin and enmity with God will not continue when a person is born again. Um, and then it says that you will do all these good things. Love your brothers, obey, do God's will, abide in God's word, keep God's word, good works, and continue in the faith. Okay, so what they don't understand is the difference between the spirit and the flesh. Um, any verses saying that um, you will no longer sin, like First John, no one who is born of God practices sin because his seed abides in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. This is the spirit, your, your reborn spirit. It does not sin. Um, it it obeys, it believes the truth, it does not sin, it obeys God's commandments, um, 
It does the will of God. It abides in God's word. It keeps God's word. It does good works. It continues in the faith. All of those good things are done by your spirit because your spirit cannot sin. But we still have the flesh. And the uh, spiritual growth for the Christian is about learning that you have the spirit and flesh and learning um, how to walk in the spirit instead of walking in the flesh. And that is not an easy lesson to learn and it takes it can take decades. No one should expect a baby Christian to be walking in the spirit within, you know, it's, it's, I mean, look at a child. They, they're born, they can't do anything. They have to be fed, clothed, bathed, carried, everything. Um, so that's like walking in the flesh. And then as they get older, they start to learn slowly to crawl then to walk and then you know start to look after themselves and eventually they grow up and become an adult and can do everything on their own it's like that with walking in the spirit it takes time it takes i mean god is fast tracking everything at the moment i think a lot of people are learning this um like really really fast but you know previously it's it's something that takes a lifetime and it's part of our spiritual maturity to learn between the, the difference between the spirit and the flesh and to learn how to walk in the spirits to subdue the flesh and to not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And the more you learn to walk in the spirit, the more all of these good things are going to come out in your life. But to say that somebody who has not learned to walk in the spirit yet and is still battling with their flesh and trying to subdue their flesh with their flesh instead of subduing it with the spirit they're going to have none of these good things in their life and they could backslide for years and or decades like I did because I had no understanding I didn't un I didn't study the word because I didn't understand it when I read it and I thought I needed to speak in tongues or whatever and have spiritual experiences but I never got them so I just sort of was in no man's land for 30 years not knowing anything and not realizing that it was the knowledge of Jesus what he did on the cross who I am in Christ my positional the positional truths you know my identity in Christ um, knowing that God that I am complete in Christ. He's given me everything I need in this life. I didn't know any of that. And someone who doesn't know any of that is not going to show all of these evidences of faith. Um, you know, a changed life. And that's when these lordshipers come along and say, oh, well, you, you're not saved. You need to fully surrender. So at the end here they say in contrast easy believism teaches that although some spiritual fruit is inevitable that fruit not, might not be visible to others and Christians can even lapse into a state of permanent spiritual barrenness. I wouldn't say permanent. God will eventually bring them out of it but don't expect to see it um, for a while, you know. Except now I think he's speeding things up and people are coming out of these um, spiritual barren states uh, and, and producing fruit. So um, I don't have a problem with the, the, what they consider a, a bad thing about easy believism here because it's true. Uh, fifth scripture teaches us that God's gift of eternal life includes all that pertains to life and godliness not just a ticket to heaven. In contrast, according to easy beliefs, only the judicial aspects of salvation are guaranteed for believers in this life. Practical sanctification and growth in grace require a post-conversion act of dedication. Uh, we do have everything that pertains to life and godliness. 
not really sure what their point is here, but we are justified, sanctified. Uh, our spirit, this is our spirit, you know, it's the spirit is justified, sanctified, holy, righteous. This is where they don't understand the difference between spirit and flesh. And your flesh will never be sanctified. Um, you can only learn to walk in the spirit and subdue the flesh. Um, so, as I've said before, progressive sanctification is not a thing. It doesn't exist. You are merely renewing your mind daily um, and learning to walk in the spirit and growing in your knowledge of God and grace um, and realizing who you are in Christ and what he's done for you and aligning your thinking with all of that. As you do that, you're aligning your soul, your mind, will and emotions with your spirit instead of aligning it with the flesh, your old man, the way you were before. You gradually start to align it with the truth about you, which is your spirit. Everything about you, about your spirit, sorry, everything that your spirit is, is what you really are because your flesh is passing away. It's, it's got um, a use by date on it, whereas your spirit will go on for eternity. So they don't understand that it's a matter of, they just don't understand this flesh and the spirit and how to, how to, uh, anyway, that one's a bit, I don't really understand that one. Number six, scripture teaches that Jesus is Lord of all and the faith demand, uh, and the faith he demands involves unconditional surrender. I have never seen anything in the Bible that says you must unconditionally surrender um, and, or you're not saved. Um, you were slaves to sin, you became obedient from the heart to that form of teaching that you were committed. That's obedience to the believing, believing the gospel. That's what you you obeyed. And having been freed from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. So when we're born again, uh, um, we are we die to sin and the law. And it no longer has power over us um, it's significantly diminished and we are free to sin but we're also free to be you know to obey righteousness to agree with our spirit so it's yeah it's that thing of well, do you walk in the flesh or do you walk in the spirit again they don't understand the difference they think that your flesh should suddenly become sanctified or at least that's the aim of your Christian life is to sanctify your flesh and, and make it obedient and make it a slave to righteousness, which it cannot do. It just cannot do that. You, you can't change your flesh. You can only subdue it through the spirit. Um, what do they say? In other words, Christ does not bestow eternal life on those whose hearts remain set against him. If I believe the gospel, how, how on earth... Can you say I'm set against him? He died for my sins and I believe it. I'm not set against him because I sin. I don't get that. Surrender to Jesus' lordship is not an addendum to the biblical terms of salvation. Uh, yes, that's what you've made it. Um, the summons to submission is at the heart of the gospel invitation throughout scripture. No, it's not. It's to believe. In contrast, easy believism teaches that submission to Christ's supreme authority is not germane, I don't know what that means, to the saving transaction. Well, I don't know how you can't. I mean, Jesus is God and he died for my sins. And I know that he has ultimate authority in this universe because he made it. Um, I don't have to prove in any way that I believe that. I think everybody who believes Jesus died for their sins is going to believe that. Um, otherwise, you just wouldn't believe that he is Christ and He that he is God and died for your sins. Anyway, that was a bit 
It's a bit strange. Scripture teaches that those who truly believe will love Christ. They will therefore long to obey him in contrast if he believes that believers and teaches that Christians may fall into a state of lifelong carnality. Well, again, spirit versus flesh. My spirit loves Christ because it's born of God. It's joined to the Holy Spirit as one. It does not sin. Um, and I, as I align myself with my spirit, I align my soul, my mind, will and emotions with my spirit, I learn about him and it's my, you know, my, my soul begins to love Christ in agreement with my spirit who does. Um, but you can't love someone you don't know. And so as you look, he loves he loved me first if if i wasn't saved i couldn't how could i love him when i don't know him and i was in a fallen state so anyway it it's i can be in carnality but my spirit it is perfect I might be, you know, living in the flesh all the time, but my spirit is not. Um, it, my spirit is still there, and it 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 loves Christ. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that one's a bit silly too. Scripture teaches that behaviour is an important test of faith. Obedience is evidence that one's faith is real. But this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. His commandments are love. You can only love um, if I'm born again. And it's his love through me loving other people as I walk in the spirit. So again, is spirit versus flesh. My flesh is, uh, you know, not going to love. It's not going to obey. Um but my spirit does and I'm learning to align with my spirit. On the other hand, the person who remains utterly unwilling to obey Christ does not evidence true faith. Um, in contrast, easy believism teaches that disobedience and prolonged sin are no reason to doubt the reality of one's faith. Okay, so... This is backloading works. It's saying um, you might believe the gospel, but if your behavior hasn't changed, if you don't obey stuff in the Bible, like Ten Commandments and stuff, um, then you are not really saved. Well, what is it? How, how do I get saved? Is it believing the gospel? If your answer is yes, then how can you later say, oh, but you didn't show any great change, um, you're not obeying, so you mustn't be saved. But then, so then I'm left going, well, well how, how do I get saved? Because I thought it was believing the gospel, and I did, I do. Um, oh, no, well, you, you, you've got to obey. Okay, so now you're adding works. You're saying, I can believe the gospel, but if but I have to work, otherwise I'm not saved. It does not make sense. And believe me, I have been through that. When I believed the gospel, and I was in this terrible state of lack of knowledge, lack of, you know, spiritual food to feed me, to feed my spirit, I didn't know what I was doing um, all I knew was I was lost and I needed God to somehow rescue me out of this terrible situation I couldn't go back to I, I couldn't unbelieve I just <laughs> and I couldn't be satisfied living as a someone in the world I was in this really awkward middle ground of I'm a Christian but I don't act like one I, I don't feel like one but I can't not be a Christian because I believe. 
I couldn't walk away. I can't. I couldn't give up on it. I tried giving up on it. And I couldn't because I believed and my spirit was reborn and it was in me, you know. I, I, I was in a really in between place and it was really really awful so um, but I didn't know how to get out of it and when Lordship Salvation has told me I had to fully surrender and you know my, the evidence of me being saved was pretty bad so therefore I probably wasn't and so I needed to fully surrender in order to be saved well that's works you're adding works to the gospel and you know if you haven't been there it's probably hard to understand why this is such a big deal and why it's so important um okay number nine scripture teaches that genuine believers may stumble and fall but they will persevere in the faith What's the verse? Who will also confirm you to the end blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's just eternal security. I am blameless and always was, you know, from the time that I was born again. My spirit is blameless. That is the part of us that is, you know, going to heaven not our flesh so my spirit is sanctified holy righteous you know it's blameless it's spotless it i can't lose my salvation so that's what that's talking about it's not saying that i will lead a a persistent um outwardly godly life and therefore that proves i'm saved those who turn, who later turn completely away from the Lord show that they were never truly born again. Well, I would have to ask them what they believe. Someone may walk away because of whatever circumstances they've been through, you know, malnourished from not, not getting the, the true gospel and getting depressed and walking away because, well, hey, I did that. Um, but if anyone asks me, do, do I believe the gospel, I would always say yes. So I was born again. Of course, there are plenty of people who um, end up in churches for one reason or another. It could be their family were Christian, so they went to church, but they never believed. And then left after a while because they... Um, they just couldn't keep up the charade anymore. Of course, there's going to be people like that. But, and if you ask them, do they believe the gospel? They probably say, no, I just, I just never really believed it. I went because my family did. And, you know, well, yes, there's going to be people like that. But the ones who do believe, you cannot say that they were never saved. In contrast, easy believers and teachers that a true believer may Utterly forsake Christ and come to the point of not believing. Well, I sort of already explained that. Um, there will be people who never believed and there will be people who did. Um, but some may say out of their mouth they don't. For appearances sake maybe, you know. They want to be in with the atheist crowd, so they might say they're an atheist, but deep down they really do believe, and then at some point God will bring them back. But don't judge them. You can only go on what someone says they believe. So, that is kind of what Lordship Salvation is all about. It's, taking, um, it's not understanding the difference between um, spirit and flesh and that the spirit is the one that does all the good things and the flesh does not and that the flesh can rule in your life for quite a long time and the only way you can turn the tide and start walking in the spirit is through renewing your mind believing the gospel believing what is um, true about yourself 
your your identification truths, what Jesus did on the cross, his complete complete accomplishment on the cross. Everything was done on the cross, and you have everything now, and you will see it in with your eyes in in heaven. But right now, it's by faith that you believe you have all these things, and your faith needs to be built up. And people who want to inspect your fruit and say you're not obeying and you're not doing, uh, you know, you're not repenting enough, you're not obeying enough, you're, you're not doing out, outward good works enough, you're not showing enough growth or something that you're um, therefore not saved. It's, it's got nothing to do with all of that. And people do go through long periods of spiritual barrenness to the point where even they start to wonder if they're saved, which I did. So um, that is how damaging Lordship Salvation is. And when you hear people say it's grace, but you if, if we don't see any evidence of fruit and good works, then you're probably not saved. That is a lie. That is false. And they are in Lordship Salvation. And you should not listen to what they're saying. It's not biblical. It's taking verses. It's just not understanding the difference between spirit and flesh. And um, it's trying to put you under law, under works, backloading them in so that they can say you're saved by grace, but you're not really because it's not grace when you have to do works to prove you're saved. They don't understand the meaning of the word grace, free gift. It's belief, it's, you just believe in it and you, you get eternal life. We don't want to be living in sin because it's bad for us. Believe me, I've been there. And rather than telling people their sin is bad and they better stop doing it. Instead, point them to the gospel and what Jesus did and who they are in Christ and the reality of their flesh and their spirit so they can understand why they still sin and learn how they, so they can learn how to walk in the spirit and uh, walk by faith. You know, it, it's it's a process to build up that faith to walk trusting everything you read in the bible because it took me a long time to actually believe that a lot of the things i was reading in the bible were for me were true of me i thought oh well they're true of other people but not me i'm i'm not good enough so it's nurture people we need to nurture people's understanding of these things and then you will see changes in their life so don't be a fruit inspector. Don't let anyone inspect your fruit. It's it's all about the truth, the truth of the gospel. What do people believe? Don't look at fruit. Anyway, I better stop. I've been going on for quite a while. All right, see you later.